Times in that game, you'd be thinking, I'm going to lose this. Times in that game, you're thinking, I've got it. <laughs> How many times did it switch between the two? Because I lost track. Yeah, it, it was it was a strange game, tough game to play. Um, Scott was fantastic. Um, he put the pressure on me straight away from the start. Um, I walked off 2-0 down. And I, I saw what he was averaging as I walked off, which is probably a bad thing to do when you... You know, when you're losing, he was averaging 108, he, he was playing fantastic. Um, all, all I could do was come back out, give it me all, um, try and put him under a bit of pressure, which could hopefully make him miss a few doubles. And that's what happened. Um, I, I never, I did believe I was, I was out when I walked off at that break. I think I won the first leg and I thought, right, come on, win this set against, against the throw um, and put him under pressure. And I put him under pressure and... Well, I won't say crumble, but he missed opportunities, and um, you know, luckily for me, <coughs> he did that, and I got the result. Deciding set. I mean, you're banging a 150, and it looks like a match winner or a match saver, and then he is back with a 125. Yeah. I mean, the, what's going on in your head while that's happening? Now that that's a class of of Scott Waits. Um, you know, the, the rankings do not do Scott Waits justice. He's a two-time world champion, he's won the Grand Slam. Um, I know that he, he's got absolute class and he should have beat me last month at the Players' Championship. So I took that 150 out, give it some, uh, and he, he followed it up with a 180 to kick start the leg and, and banged a 125 out to go one all. So fair play to him. Um, but then after that, I, I don't know what happened, you know, the gods were with me, uh, we started missing doubles and uh, I still had to hit them and I did hit them and I've won and I think you need you need a game like that sometimes, it's not nice to play in but I think I can kick on from that now. I'm, it's one of them where I believe that maybe I should have been out of the tournament, I'm still in the tournament so let's, let's, let's continue and let's crack on. Well, we've seen plenty of players in the past that have won World Championships, survived match darts or scares, I mean you've had it yourself, yourself against German Price a couple of years back on your debut. Yeah, definitely. I I always talk about that moment. If he hit that bull to beat me three sets to nil, would I have achieved what I've done over the last two years? Would I have been a, a Premier League runner-up? Honest to God, nah. It wouldn't have happened. And things happen for a reason. Um, that's what I believe. Um, I think that he's missed them doubles because I'm going to become the world champion. Oh, I like this. <laughs> so yeah, we all, we all. Come on, let's break. Like, well, the thing is, though. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, Premier League run up, you've already won major titles. The start of the year, certainly, everybody's talking about the big three Van Gerwen, Wright, Price. The start of the year, you had a legitimate claim to be next in line in terms of best player in the world, didn't you? Yeah, my, my form before COVID was probably. I rated myself one of the best players in the world. I still rate myself one of the best players in the world, but certainly in that Elite Four. Um, Colby's not been, apart from the home tour, Dan, yeah. which I won that for you, obviously. <laughs> um, but apart from that, um, it's been a tough year for me. Um, I love the fans. Um, me, me, Gezi and Michael, to be quite honest with you, we, we love the fans here. They're not here and I've really struggled, to be honest with you. It, I've only been a professional for two years and still playing in front of fans is still an amazing buzz for me and it kind of been taken away. Um, but. You know, I, I put the hours in the last probably three weeks because I know I've been struggling. I have worked my off. Um, I've been doing six to eight hours a day. I've been up to Scotland to play with Andy Bolton and put back with Smithy. I've been putting the hours in and, um, you know, OK, maybe I shouldn't have won that game tonight, but I kind of feel like that was my reward for putting so many hours in and dedication over the last three weeks. You make your own luck. Well played. Enjoy Christmas. We'll see Cheers, you. Dan. And you. Nathan, congratulations. Just touching on what you said there about the fans. When we spoke to you at the Players' Championships, you were the most excited yeah. player. The announcement, we'd have a thousand in there. How did you feel when that was crushed and it was going back behind closed uh, doors? Gutted. Um, fans make darts. Um, you know, us lads, we go up there, we do our best, we, we try and entertain. Obviously, there's more players that entertain than others. You know, I put myself in that category. Me, Gezi, we, we give it so many pure emotion. Um, the fans got to, kind of taken away from us, and I was absolutely gutted. I couldn't believe it. Um, and it was, it, the setup out there was mega. But I expected to come here with all the crowd and all the noise and everything, and it was really, really hard. It was, it was really quiet out there. Um, but you know, it is what it is, and um, I'll try my best, whatever the conditions. Um, just happy that I'm playing darts, and you know, if I come 
become the world champion on the 3rd of January, I don't care whether there's 10,000 or just you there, Phil, I'm the world champion, and that's all that matters. Back to the game, when he's got Only three... one game. <laughs> <laughs> when he's got three darts at tens, yeah. the fact that he'd missed darts against you at the players, were you thinking, he might just miss this again here? I didn't think he'd miss, um, but when he did miss, I was thinking, he's definitely thinking about that game, because as a dart player, you do think of past things that happened. Um, like I, even two years on, Smithy had a double nine against me when I played him in the semis. I think it was to go four three up, and we always the laughing joke and talk about that double nine. It's always in my head that he hit that double nine and that would in that match. So on a different scale, he missed some three darts. He must have been thinking about them doubles, and I knew that. And I just thought kick off well in the last leg, and uh, he, he will just crumble, and he did. And uh, darts is a lot of a lot of ability. You know, we put a lot of hours in, but when you get to a certain level, it's up there. And um, I think I won that game today because I'm I, honestly I'm I'm really strong up there, and I think I just had that little bit extra. Start of the match, you said when you looked at his average, he's averaging near on 108. Do you think the fact that he's already played out there once gave him that quick start over you because you didn't know what to expect out there? Um. I know, we played a lot of events behind closed doors, um, but that was probably the quietest with regards to the artificial noise. It was so quiet, and I didn't expect it to be that quiet, but I spoke to a few players in the hotel, uh, Devon, um, Ch well, Chizzy when he walked off about it, and um, I kind of knew what to expect, to expect, but then when I walked out, I was like, wow, this is like, even the walk-on was like, so quiet, um, but... I don't think it played a factor because we've we, we played it for six months now behind closed doors and uh, we've played so many games. Uh, I just think he just played a fantastic game at the start and, uh, and I didn't. Can you enjoy Christmas Day a little bit more now than what you could have done? <laughs> well, I can, but I've got to cook dinner because obviously we're getting tested again when we come back. So normally I always go to my grandma's and she normally does the dinner. And um, obviously with what's going on, I can't risk anything. So I wasn't actually going to go home, but I've got two two daughters and... I kind of said, right, we'll I'll come home, but we're staying up in the house. I'll cook dinner. Uh, you're doing the pots, Kirsty. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll enjoy dinner, and I'll come back up Boxing Day. Last one. As a player, is that, obviously, heart versus head, obviously, a young family, but how gutted would you be if you come back and then fail the test? Is that uh, literally heart versus head here? I trust you to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd be gutted. Uh, listen, if, if we didn't get tested, if, if I stayed and I didn't get tested... I would have took the, the sacrifice and stayed. And my family support me, and that was the decision that we decided on. I spoke to uh, Graham Fairhurst and he said, you have to get tested anyway. So we're going home, we're staying in the house, we're not seeing anyone. Um, yeah, it is what it is. This is my career. I'm doing it you know, for my family to have a better life. And they all know that, they all support me. And uh, you know, I'll come back and uh, fingers crossed, we don't fail. Nathan, pleasure as always. Thanks very much, mate. Nathan, you say about looking at Scott's average after the second break. What did you say to yourself while you're backstage there? Um, just, just try and dig deep, try and, mm. try and keep throwing like you was. I knew I was playing okay. My scoring wasn't great. I think I walked off and I knew I'd not hit a 188. And I'm thinking, just try and up your scoring a bit, put him under a bit of pressure, and maybe he'll start missing doubles. And if he doesn't, and he, and he finishes. He finishes the game off, and fair play to him. He played a great game, um, but I up and scoring. He missed the doubles. I won, and kind of everything that I panned out in my head when I walked off kind of happened. So I feel like I've got, you know, I feel like I, I passed goal and collected my 200 quid, and you know, got kind of got another life. But uh, yeah, I've won, and uh, I'm into the next round. The last two, two world championships have played a, a very big part in your career. Is it a little bit different this time around yeah. in terms of expectation? Obviously, everything's very different now. Then, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people that think I'm going to do well. Um, for for myself personally, I'm just going to. I love the fans, as I keep mm -hmm. saying. I love the crowd. The louder, the better for me. You know, getting the Premier League last year was was a dream, and walking out in front of ten thousand people going absolutely mental. You know, I love. Um, so, I'm treating this tournament. I'm, I'm, I'm trying as hard as I can to try and get myself going, try and get the adrenaline pumping, 
um, and I want to win this title. Um, with fans or without fans, I'm there, I'm giving it hundred percent, trying to get myself going and uh, I got myself going at the end, got myself going, got the result, so happy days. Oh, Cheers for your time, Nathan. Thank yeah. you. Good to see you again.